One of the best ways to continue growing as a person is to focus on yourself or to focus on self-improvement. If you are just starting a self-improvement journey, it might seem scary, but the thing is that self-improvement is an ongoing process. There's no pressure to meet deadlines or to achieve a million accomplishments. Self-improvement is all about learning and growing. This could mean taking more steps to reach your goal or adding extra things into your day to make you feel better. This video will go over a step-by-step -step guide to help you get started on your self-improvement journey. First off, the very first thing you should do in your self-improvement journey is to clean your room. This sounds like a joke, but I'm serious here. Self-improvement is all about overcoming obstacles to become better and grow as a person. For example, if you want to be more attractive, you need to go to the gym, clean up your diet, and get a skincare routine. Since you want to accomplish a big goal, it makes sense that the obstacle is huge. This is why a lot of people struggle with self-improvement. Most people want to start off with a huge goal, but they struggle to accomplish it because they don't have the necessary skills. If you ever played video games, specifically RPGs, you know that you can't just fight a super strong boss in the beginning, or you'll get one shot. You need to level up and get strong enough before you even stand a chance. The same concept applies in real life. You need to overcome small obstacles before you can deal with big ones. When you are cleaning your room and doing every little thing from rearranging to taking out the trash, you are leveling up your skills by increasing your motivation, work ethic, and discipline. By taking care of your immediate environment, you can then take on bigger challenges. One of the biggest advocates for cleaning your room before taking on bigger challenges is Jordan B. Peterson. If you want to learn more about this subject, you should listen to his episode on the Joe Rogan Podcast. Second, figure out your next place to start. If you are feeling goalless, you should look at the four pillars of a good life and think about which one you want to work on first. The four pillars of a good life are health, wealth, love, and happiness. Health refers to your physical health, so if that's your area of concern, you want to look into getting more exercise and fixing your diet. Wealth refers to your finances and career, so you want to look into getting a side hustle, starting a business, saving money, and other personal finance topics. Love refers to your relationships, so you want to look into finding a significant other and improving the relationships you have or forming new ones. Happiness refers to your mental health, and I think it's the most complex pillar. If you want to improve your happiness, you want to look into adding things into your day that make you feel better or building habits that can make you happier. You also might want to look into how to handle your emotions better, which is a complex subject. Find out which area needs some attention and start from there. Third, once you know where to start, it's time to do some research and learn. Everyone has their preferred way of learning, so there are many ways to approach this step. Some people learn best by reading books on the subject, while other people learn best by video tutorials. One thing to watch out for is the dopamine rush when you finish the material. You'll feel good, and your mind thinks that you improved yourself, but the truth is that just learning doesn't mean you did any self-improvement. You need to apply what you learn to actually grow as a person. This is a common trap that people who are on a self-improvement journey fall into. They keep consuming material, but they don't apply anything, which doesn't do anything for them. When you are going through the materials, I suggest you take notes on the things you strongly agree with and start thinking about how to apply what you learn. By the way, it's okay to not agree with everything you learn. In fact, it's a good thing. It's not very effective to try to apply things you don't believe in after all. Fourth, execute and apply what you learn. This step is pretty self-explanatory. After you apply what you learn, take note of the result. If the result isn't what you desired, think about what went wrong. From there, you can either improve from the failure last time and try again, or you can try something else to try to achieve your goal. It's up to you to make the decision on what the best move is. You'll probably spend most of your time here on this step, since you can only move on to the last step once you achieve your goal and get what you want. Fifth, find other areas you want to improve in and start the process from step three. You basically have a goal you want to achieve, learn how to achieve it, 
and then do what you need to do to achieve it. Remember that self-improvement is an ongoing process and you will constantly be doing things to improve yourself. Some people might not agree with the first step about cleaning your room, but I strongly suggest you do it, or at least give it some more thought. The idea of doing smaller challenges before bigger ones is something you should think about and apply if you believe in it. Other than that, most people's self-improvement journey will be similar to what I outlined in this video. By the way, if you are interested in an online course, there are several online courses I linked in the description that are done by Practical Psychology. He's one of the biggest self-improvement YouTube channels and his courses are effective. Check them out and see if the course interests you. Are you new to self-improvement? Leave a comment below and check out the video shown on the end screen if you like this video and want more content.